Hey everyone, how are we doing? And welcome to this video that's going to go through different builds for the 3070, 3080 and 3090. You've probably already noticed that the cards are actually pre-released, so we can't actually build them yet. But rest assured, as soon as they are released and I have them in the studio, we'll be putting these things together for real. So do get subscribed to actually see that. So let's begin then. And we're going to open up our Trello screen with, at the moment, three blank builds. You can see we're going to need all of these components over on Overclockers UK. And you can see all of the cards do now start to come up. You can't order them just yet, but they do give you information on pricing. So let's pick, I don't know, let's look at some prices first. We can see that the 3070, this very colorful one from Palette is 499. Let's have a look at the Zotac, 469. So all around about the 500 pound mark. I guess it depends on the case that you're going to go for really. Uh, in terms of the size. I quite like the look of this EVGA one, so let's go for this. £479 for RTX 2080 Ti level performance is not too shabby at all. Next up, it's the CPU, or the processor, and regardless of what anyone tells you, there's no right or wrong answer. You pretty much got three chips really I think at this price point to choose from that would make the most sense. You've got Intel's Core i5-10600K, which over on overclockers is around about £250 at the moment, or you can go for a Ryzen CPU and then you'd be looking at a Ryzen 5 3600 or a Ryzen 7 3700X. It's going to depend entirely on what you want to use your PC for if you're doing things other than just gaming. 3700X makes a lot of sense, but if you're trying to save yourself the most amount of money, then the 3600 is a very good bet. But do be aware that if you're wanting to play at like 200 frames a second or so, it's definitely not quite such a good choice as the others. Ryzen 5 3600. Don't get the X, there's not really any point doing that to be honest. Here you go, £209.99. Motherboard wise, there are a few different options. You can either go for X570 or B550. You could drop down to B450, but you want PCI Gen 4 really if you're building a new PC, so this is what I would advise. Again, especially at this price point. Let's try to save ourselves a little bit of cash and go for this Mag B550 Tomahawk from MSI. As far as RAM or memory is concerned, I would go for two sticks of eight to make 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM. My favorites at the moment are from Corsair, G-Skill, and Crucial. If you wanna go for some RGB, I think those look the best. But if I was building it myself, I would probably go for whatever was the best value and still looks good and had all of those speeds. But having said that, there's a good offer at the moment on this Patriot kit, Viper Steel 16 gigabytes, 3600 for 7499. So we're gonna take one of those. Next up, it's arguably the most exciting bit, the case as this is gonna be custom to your style and whichever one you go for, it's gonna reflect your personality. Quick disclaimer, I have not measured any of these graphics cards, so make sure that you actually get a graphics card that will fit in the case that you choose before buying. At this price point, there are actually so many to choose from. The Land Call 2, very good. P500, excellent, but is currently out of stock. But I really liked this one from MSI. And the thing that's good about it is that you get so many features and decent enough airflow for a relatively low price. Not sure I could pronounce the name though. It's the MPG Gungnir? Gungnir? Again, with cooling, there is so many different options to choose from. You can have like an all-in-one if you really want to push your CPU as far as it will go. There is a matching one from MSI that would probably be the right pick, but I would save yourself some money and get Be Quiet's Pure Up 2, and you can get it in black. This looks fantastic, and it is silent. Honestly, once you've got this installed, which is incredibly easy, by the way, you will just not hear it in the background, and you will give yourself a little bit of overclocking headroom if so desired. We won't add any extra fans because it's not really required at this price point, but we do need storage and a power supply. Let's see how much PCIe 4 is. One terabyte for PCIe 4, 409 pounds for two terabytes of PCIe 4. There is one here, it's not the absolute fastest from Seagate, it's the FireQ to 520, 109.99 for 500 gig. So we're gonna use that, I think. There's not necessarily a right or wrong decision. If you've got a lot of stuff that you wanna store, you probably wanna go for a slower drive with more capacity. It all depends on what you want, I guess which then just leaves the PSU or the power supply. And you're gonna need something with I think around about at least 650, 750 watts of power. There are quite a lot to choose from here. Corsair power supplies are very good. I've never had any issues with them. 100 pounds for this RM750. Fully modular seems like a very good option. RM750, done. So then, this is our full list of components for the PC. It currently says £796, but don't get too excited. You can't actually add the graphics card to that just yet. Drum roll, please. That brings us to 
£1,275.52, which is insane, and I'll tell you why. If you'd bought a 2080 Ti Strix a few months ago, that would have cost more than this whole PC. All of it. £1,275. You will need to add a copy of Windows if you don't have one already and can't move it across. But let's see what we can do with our 3080. We're going to copy some stuff straight across because things like the RAM, there's no point changing that at all to be honest. We could also keep the motherboard if we want to save ourselves some money, but this time I think we're going to go for X570. And I quite like the Strix board, so here we have the X570E and the Strix X570F. There are some differences between the two. But for now, let's just go with the X570F, and then let's go really big with the Ryzen 7 3800 XT. Before we forget, let's actually pick out an RTX 3080. Loads of different cars to choose from. The Strix Edition, I guarantee, is going to be too expensive. I don't know, £829, that is not too bad. Doorbell is going. Uh, uh, cheers, thank you. Cheers. £829, that's not actually too bad, but I guarantee we can find something for a little bit less. There you go, 659 if we want to stick with EVGA. Some of the other options, what have we got? Choose a pretty one. Obviously just pick the one that matches your style the best. Okay, let's let, let's go for the Gigabyte one. Let, let's, let's use this this time. Again, make sure this will actually fit in your case. I've not tested it, but having said that, I really don't think it's going to be a problem because the case I want to recommend is the one I have myself, the P600S from Fantex. This thing is awesome. In the pictures, I think it looks a little bit ugly, to be honest, but just take that front panel off, take the top off, and what you're left with is a beautiful case, and it's big as well, it accommodates loads of hardware. I've got the grey edition, it is what I recommend. Oh, they do it in white as well, ooh, that's nice. Which then just leaves us with the cooler and the fans. For this, we definitely will need to up our game a little bit, I think. If you're looking at buying an all-in-one, they can tend to get quite expensive these days. Looking at these prices, I swear they used to be cheaper. You can get cheaper ones, but I don't know, I tend to stay away from them unless you know you're getting one that's decent. Here's that MSI one that I mentioned for the previous case, if you wanted to match things up. I really like the H100i though because it comes with their maglev fans. I don't think you can call them that actually. They're technically the magnetic levitation fans. They have loads of RGB, they look good, and you're going to get the quiet and the looks. So let's go with this, $134.99. And again, I'm not going to include extra fans because that is purely at your discretion. It is going to add extra cost. You can see £92.99. They are quite expensive, but they're silent and they can cool very well. But they look good. I think that's one of the main reasons people will upgrade to them. But here we are then, our 3080 build. You can see we've kept the same RAM. SSD is before, but we have actually now got two power supplies. That is, that's wrong. But here we have our upgraded motherboard, processor, power supply has gone up ever so slightly, slightly bigger and arguably better looking case, and then our H100i liquid cooler. And that brings us to £1,194.55. But when we add in our admittedly quite expensive now graphics card, we come to £1,884.54. So, an expensive PC build, but not a bad one whatsoever. This thing is going to be faster than anything that we've seen before. Remember, it should be around about double the performance of a 2080. And again, not that much more expensive than the ROG Strix 2080 Ti from the last generation. So, not too bad at all. And extra CPU performance, let's not forget about that. Which then leads us finally on to the biggest of the boys, the 3090. And we do have to make a few changes here. Right off the bat, we're going to go for Intel this time, 10900K, and we're going to assume you're going to want to overclock it as far as it will go. Bump up that power supply to 1000 watts. We're going to double our RAM to 32 gigabytes. We're going to downgrade our PCIe SSD to Gen 3 as it's not yet supported on Intel. That is a little bit of a weird one. We go for one terabyte of storage with the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. We go for ROG's Maximus Hero 12 motherboard. It knows, look, it knows what we want. 540 pound 10 core CPU that we're gonna be able to overclock the hell out of, yes please. Let's go for the very best all-in-one liquid cooler, 360, 250 pounds, but it's got this awesome little screen on it. In terms of the case, you are after something that is very big, it's 3090 time, you've gotta go big. And I really like the O11 Dynamic, I've used this before, it's excellent, they do an XL version, so should be able to fit it in, but again, check your GPU will fit, but I don't think it'll be an issue in this. 
for check. The only catch is that you do need to add your own fans. So we will go full RGB with Corsair's QR120s. They come in packs of three, so let's add two of those in. It would be awesome if I could actually just buy all of this stuff and be like, hey, just for jokes. Sadly not. Which then brings us on nicely to the big boy itself, the RTX 3090. The Strix card is £1,569. There are loads of different good ones to choose from. Gigabyte cards look nice there with their extremes. Their master. Oh, that is expensive. I don't know, the palette one looks quite cool. Is it? But let's go MSI this time. Let's go for the Gaming X Trio. Looks very good. Excited again to see this one in person. £1,500. I mean, that's a bargain, isn't it? Okay then, so drum roll please, it's time for the final tally of pricing. Let's double check I haven't got any duplicates. No, this is the real deal this time. We have £1,499 just for our GPU, plus £2,172.91, £3,672.90. Absolute bargain. If you don't buy this, then I don't know is a disservice to us all. But no, realistically, this is obviously gonna be an absolutely insane computer, but not really just for gaming. It's more aimed at people that are gonna be doing 3D rendering or, or anything that needs a lot of graphics memory and just an insane amount of CUDA cores, all of that good stuff. So don't feel like you're being left out if you can't afford a 3090. I think that's 99.99% of people. Don't worry about it. So there we go then. Three different builds. One for the 3070, one for the 3080, one for the 3090. Let me know your thoughts down below. I know I shouldn't have to say this, but just in case you're wondering, we obviously upped everything as we went along to sort of, I don't know, like just go along with the price increases of the GPU. You do not need to do that. If you want to grab a 3080 with a 3070 build, it's almost certainly gonna work more or less identically. It's just that CPU that you need to be careful of really as you step up with the graphics horsepower. If you don't necessarily need PCI Gen 4, you don't want it, you don't have to buy it. Again, should go without saying. But yeah, I'll leave links to everything featured down below. Do let me know your thoughts though. Are you going to be building something like this? What case would you go for? I would love to hear from you. So let me know down below. Hit that like button, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.